hello and welcome everyone so in this video we are going to do a just a little bit of explanation of what we're doing in c plus plus for those of you who just want to follow along what we follow along with this tutorial you can skip this video but for those those of you who want to know what we are doing in this in the c plus plus code and this video is for you so if we jump over to our c plus plus code and if you don't know how to go to this just go to your content browser and you'll see this c plus plus classes folder and here you see our base character just double click this and it will open up in your development environment so first of all what we are going to discuss is that we have two files for our character class base character dot h and base character dot cpp one is the header file and the other one is the actual implementation file for this class in the header file we just declare these functions and variables while in the cpp file we actually define what a function is supposed to do like just for example we see this get ability system component function this is the simplest one so here we are i am telling other classes that hey i have this function called get ability system component that you can use and in the cpp file i actually tell uh, what this function is supposed to do like this function is supposed to return our ability system component variable to the calling class that is calling this function and starting from the beginning we'll see that we see that we have included three header files in our code and so this allows us actually to import the functionality that's defined in these header files that is provided by the android engine itself now this is what is known as inheritance we our class a base character is inheriting all the features of the a character class and inheriting all the features of the iable system interface class so a simple character would not have the ability system component. So we are uh, importing everything that a character has, like character movement, jumping, all the pawn related stuff. And we are also uh, extending our, the functionality of the character class with our own functionality, like with this ability system component, the initializability function and get ability system component functions. Now here, U property, this is a macro provided by the Unreal Engine. It allows us to expose the variables to the reflection system that's what they call this uh, so we de and define the variables inside of c plus plus and then it gets automatically exposed to our blueprint code like this and another thing what you will see that u function and u property these are two macros that are used exposed to used to expose variables and functions u properties use generally used for variables and u function is used for functions and what we have done over here is this is the constructor so constructor is like the construction script it runs at the very beginning when the class is created so in this we are just initializing our variable ability system comp to a default object of the type ability system component and just calling it ability system comp and this is the begin play if you want to do something over here the tick function and similarly if you come to this function initialize ability so what we're telling this function is that you have two inputs ability to get and ability to level ability to get is a variable of type u gameplay ability and this is some unreal engine predefined classes that we are using this is a template actually um, template class something like that i think maybe and this is uh, the type of class that we want to Choose as the input. So if you see in our Unreal project, this is a gameplay ability class reference. And in in the C we have defined the, to use the U gameplay ability class. And int thirty two is in just sim, simple integer in terms of Unreal Engine language. So we are using that as an ability level. So this is just one implementation of and giving the ability. Maybe we should rename this to acquire ability or get ability in the future but let's go for this with this for now so first of all we are checking if we have a valid ability system component that is that we have a ability system component present on this character next we are checking if this character has authority and we have a valid class in this ability to get and if we if we pass these checks then we call the function provided by the ability system component give ability this function is present inside of the ability system component and we're calling that function give ability and what we're doing is 
creating a default object for this type f gameplay ability spec now the ability system component keeps a track of these ability specs to detect which abilities are activated which abilities should not be activated or blocked or there are things like cooldown costing all of these are information stored in this f gameplay ability specs so each ability has its own spec handle and uh, that we can use to activate and deactivate those so what we are doing is passing the ability to get um, and the ability level and this is the input code but we are not going to use input code we are going to use another method to activate the abilities and after we have done this we are going to initialize the ability actor info with the avatar actor and the and this class actor but for now we are using setting the avatar actor and the pawn actor as the same class yeah, you might need to vary this for a multiplayer game for example so avatar actor would be the player controller and this actor would, would be pawn if the player is alive or if he is dead you can change this to spectator class for example and the last function get ability system component we, this is an interface call so the calling class does not need to know if it is a character if it is a pawn if it is an actor if it is some other static mesh class for example we just call this function and say hey do you have ability system component if it is valid, so we'll return this ability system component. Otherwise, it's not going to be present and this will simply return false or zero. And I think this is it for this video. In the next video, we'll just start implementing some more um, base classes that are required by the ability system component and known as the attribute set. Uh, we'll start with that and then we'll move on to actual gameplay abilities and the gameplay effects and the gameplay cues. So this is it for this video. Thank you very much.